Hello everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com. I've been having such a great time bringing you the new course, The Watercolor Workshop, that I thought I'd share with you a very simple and easy approach to landscape painting that you can do in a relatively short amount of time with not too many materials, just a few colors are used here. We are going to use a little bit of liquid masking fluid for this. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can create a painting just like this. So the first thing we'll do is we'll prepare the surface by drawing out a contour line, drawing of our landscape, very simple landscape here. A uh, large area of sky, some few groupings of trees, some birches in the foreground. We're going to be using liquid masking fluid here, and I'm using Miskit by Grumbacher in order to apply it. We're going to use an old beat up brush for this because this material dries very quickly it will ruin a brush for sure if you don't wash it out. So I don't want to risk using one of my nicer brushes. I'm going to use one of my older brushes to, to apply it to the surface. You'll also notice that there's somewhat of an orange tint to it. So when you're working on a white surface like we're working here on the watercolor paper, you'll be able to see where you have laid down the marks. And I'm just going to paint these birches in the foreground here because we want to preserve the white of the paper underneath. Then we're gonna allow that masking fluid plenty of time to dry, at least 30 minutes, maybe even an hour, before we start applying our initial wash. Uh, for this first wash, we're gonna create a wash for the background, for the sky, and it's kind of a gray, bluish day. So I've created a cooler gray here for the background, and we're washing with quite a bit of water here, so it's gonna dry a little bit lighter than what you see on the surface even now. Now, this mixture I created using ultramarine, uh, a bit of alizarin crimson, and just a touch of gamboshu, which is the yellow. So uh, it's a variation of primary colors here to create this gray. It's got a heavier concentration of ultramarine in it to give it more of a cooler tonality. Now at the top of the sky, I want it to be a little bit darker in value, a little bit more intense with the blue, and I'm also going to have that happen close to the horizon here. And we're just going to overlap where we're going to lay down the trees. Now, while this area is still wet, we're going to start to lay in the trees off in the distance. And this technique is known as wet into wet. And we're going to just apply a mixture, uh, a dark green mixture, and to create this particular color, I mixed Prussian blue, ultramarine, and just a bit of gamboge hue here to create um, a dark, nice looking green. And we want it to kind of look a little bit faded. So uh, as we apply it, there's quite a bit of water in this application as well. And you can see that since the surface is still wet, the color just bleeds up into the sky and it's going to create a natural illusion of trees off in the distance and give us a bit of atmosphere. Now, while this line of trees is still wet, I'm going to go back with a, a little bit of a heavier concentration close closer to the area where the snow meets that tree line and let it get a little bit darker. Then while the surface is still damp, I'm gonna take my fingernail here. You can see I'm doing that. I'm just pulling up a few little lines and that will actually translate as some trees when we put our next application on. So at this point, the surface is a bit drier and we're going back over the top of it with even a more intense application of the same color that we used initially for the far off trees. Now I'm using the tip of the brush here and I'm using a round brush to apply this texture and I'm trying to mimic kind of the texture that you would see of trees off in the distance and because this is a darker application this line of trees is actually going to appear closer to the viewer than our first application you can see how light that first application has become as it is dried now you can't really see too much those little lines that I put in with my fingernail but as it dries the pigment will be pulled into those areas and it will create darker lines and look like tree trunks. So with this same mixture, we're gonna move on to some of the trees that are in the middle ground. And these are just a couple of pine trees that are sticking up. They're gonna give us nice contrast with the birch trees that will be in the foreground. So we want this to be a pretty dark application. And when you're working with watercolor, just keep in mind that your application is going to dry lighter than it appears when you initially put it on. So sometimes you just have to put the color on the surface and let it sit there and let it dry completely before you make any judgments on any value changes that need to take place. Now the bottom portion where we have the snow, we still want to have a light wash in this section as well. So I'm going to use the same gray that I had mixed up before. Again, that's a mixture of ultramarine, uh, alizarin crimson, and just a touch of gamboge hue. And again, we want it to be a little bit bluer in tonality, so uh, or in hue rather. So 
just a little heavier with the ultramarine in that mixture. And we might pull a little bit more of a heavier concentration down here to the bottom portion of the pitcher plane. Snow, I know, is white, but if we give it a little bit of a bluish tint, it'll look a little bit more natural. Now, using just ultramarine, we're going to pull out a few cast shadows on the snow from the bottom of the bases of the birch trees. Now, this is somewhat of a gray day, so the shadows aren't going to be too intense. If, if it was a brighter day, a sunnier, sunnier day here in our scene, we might just uh, make those shadows a little bit more intense. But I do want these lines going across the bottom. I think that the linear qualities uh, in this composition need to be a little bit exaggerated. So we've got lines going horizontally, we've got vertical lines going up to kind of frame the negative space created by the sky here. So we've got our cast shadow lines here. We've let this dry completely now at this point. So we're gonna mix up a very dark color here and it may look black here in the video, but it's not, it's actually a very dark, dark brown. Now this color was mixed by using a combination of ultramarine and just a touch of burnt umber. Now you can control the warmth or coolness of this color. A little bit more of the burnt umber is going to produce a warmer color and a little bit more of the ultramarine is going to be cooler. Now we can go back and intensify uh, a few of those lines in a couple areas and make the value just a bit darker, maybe up where it gets into the pine needles itself and lower down near the base. And I'm going to mix up that dark green again. Again, that's a mixture of ultramarine. Uh, we actually have just a touch of alizarin crimson in that mix with the gamboge hue. And the, the alizarin crimson is actually going to make it a little bit darker and neutralize it just a bit and just create another line of trees there. Of course, this is going to look closer than our second line of trees. I'm going to also go back with a uh, heavier concentration of ultramarine in that green mixture and create just a couple of areas where we have some shadows in those trees in the middle ground just to give it just a touch of depth. We don't want to add too, mi too many details to that area. And once we've allowed the painting to dry completely, so uh, maybe give it about 30 minutes or so, you can touch the surface. And if it still feels a little cold or, or a little damp, then it's not completely dry. We're going to remove all of that liquid masking fluid that we've put on there and it will come off just like um, just like an old gum eraser so it'll create these little shavings on the surface and you can brush those away the liquid masking fluid does have latex in it so if you are sensitive to that kind of thing um, you need to be careful there and, and probably find another solution with the masking fluid removed we've got these nice birch tree shapes here nice clean white spaces that we can develop and add the details. So we're going to use again a, a gray mixture. This is a uh, the result of mixing ultramarine, um, alizarin crimson, and gamboge hue. And you can make it warmer or cooler if you want it to be a little bit cooler of a shadow, a little bit more ultramarine. If you want it to be a little bit warmer, a little bit more gamboge hue in the mixture. Now you've got control over that. In this case, it's a little bit of a warmer gray. It'll contrast the blues and the snow and a little bit of the bluish tint to the sky. We're going to create a shadow here in the, the area of core shadow on the trees. We're going to leave a little bit of a highlight around the right side of those trees to indicate that these trees are round. Um, if you look at a round object, there's usually a shadow not quite to the opposite side of the light source. Uh, there's a little bit of space there and sometimes you even have a highlight right after that area of core shadow. So we're going to be careful to preserve those areas. Our light source in this image, of course, is originating from the left side, meaning that most of our core shadows are going to happen on the right side of the tree. Now, once we've allowed these shadowed areas to dry to a certain degree, the surface might be still a little bit damp. We're going to start to develop the shadows a bit darker and add a few of those details. On birch trees, sometimes the bark itself will peel away. There's all these nice little dark areas that happen on there that contrast with the white bark on the tree. So uh, this is really the fun part when we start to add these details. We're going to make mostly horizontal lines. We're going to create a few vertical lines as we start painting these in. And I'm not really tied to a photo reference, uh, even for the whole composition here. The composition was pretty much made up in my mind. Um, I do have a couple of images of birch trees in front of me, but the birch trees I'm painting here don't look a whole lot I like the birch trees in the photo reference and in other words the shapes are different and, and so on. I'm just using that photo reference basically as a reference for patterns of texture that I might pick up 
input inside of the painting. So I'm seeing these little dark areas every once in a while and most of them are creating horizontal lines. So that's what I'm trying to copy or emulate in my painting. And you don't have to be too perfect with this either. You've got a lot of freedom to make your own choices, of course, and that's true of any piece of artwork that you create. Now, this uh, the tree that's a little further off, that's nice and skinny uh, off in the distance, uh, we're going to bring that shadow down on that one just a little bit stronger, just to add a little bit more variety and to make that tree feel a little further back in space. And we'll continue to intensify with each layer. We're going to get a little darker. Um, with our application and to create a darker application we're just going to use less water so there's more pigment in the mixture we're basically using the same color the same mixture of colors again that's a mixture of primary colors um, and there might be some variations in those as you apply it so in other words you might have a little bit more gamboge hue when you revisit your palette that's okay that's going to create a bit of variety in your application you can see here um, you can see really the variety of hue that's happening in each one of these trees as each, as each layer is developed and applied to the surface. We also want to create a full range of value of course so we're going to push some of these values here in the foreground pretty dark. Um, just you know a full range of value means that you have the darkest darks, the lightest lights, a lot of mid-tones in between so you have that necessary contrast and that's basically how we see the world around us anyway we basically see things in a full range of value we're going to add a little bit of a darker value underneath some of the branches as well and uh, again that's just going to add to the illusion of depth here make the branches themselves feel three-dimensional and in the process it's going to make our light source feel a little more natural and more believable in the painting We can also pull out those shadows just a little bit further than where our branches end themselves. And then we'll just work the details until we're happy. And at this point, your painting is complete. You can allow it to dry and pull off the tape. And this is a very simple landscape painting that really anybody can do with just a few colors and a little bit of liquid masking fluid. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more, why not check out five video courses weekly live instruction, and over 6,280 minutes of art instruction, which includes video courses, downloadable eBooks, weekly live lessons streamed across the internet, and lesson plans for teachers. Just click on the Learn More Now button to start learning today.